everyone. My name is Denny White, and I am the host of the VIP Ignite Live podcast. And today I am so excited to have the one, the only Mr. Eric Woland on the call with me today. Hi, Eric. How are you today? I am absolutely fantastic. How are you, Denine? I'm doing phenomenal. So thank you so much, first of all, for being on the podcast. I appreciate you being here today. It is an honor to be with you. I just can't wait to talk to your audience, and I hope we can give some hints and help that'll make their lives better. I'm sure that we will. So Eric, um, for my audience, can you just tell them just a little bit about you and what you do? Absolutely. I uh, graduated and thought I was going to be a doctor right before medical school, went and searched my life, moved through three jobs in two years. And this is right after I got married and was sleeping on a mattress on a warehouse floor in Ohio in the winter without heat. Oh, so that's my new wife and I are there bounced through the jobs. And then two years later, I'm financially free, retired at 30, never had to work again. And that didn't stick. So three weeks later, I started buying a lot. I started two new companies. And in the last 20 years, I have done over a thousand repositions and rehabs. I own 18 companies, hundreds of rental properties, commercial, a couple of airplanes, a bunch of apartments, and maybe a hundred houses. That is insane. So you went from sleeping on a warehouse in in a warehouse on a mattress to being financially free to all of this financial abundance. So in just a couple of years. In just in just a couple of years. So I'm not going to ask you to unlock all of your secrets, but can you tell me maybe a couple things that people can start applying to start moving toward that end? Oh, I can give you all kinds of one-liners that'll help. You're not going to get there unless you take action. Yeah. Looking at how do you get a good script? How do you get people to notice you? You have to be visible. Well, in order to be financially free, you need passive income. And I have to imagine if anybody is in a job, they may be a contractor, they may be an actor, they might get a huge chunk of change today and then not have any for six months or a year. Yeah. It is sure nice to have passive income, even if it's just a little bit, just own one house and then two and then 10 and have this money coming in every month. And the way you do that is you get your name out there, you write offers. I had a guy come in and uh, we were just talking, I had a couple of new 20 year olds come to one of my mentoring groups and they are actively learning. And the one, he's 26, just bought his first house. Then I have a guy that is, I don't know, close to our age. Let's say he's in his 40s and uh, close to my age, at least. He makes 120 grand a year and he knows his job's going to move him away from his kids again in two and a half months. Well, he's been showing up and meeting me for a month and hasn't rent an offer yet. Oh, so he said, well, I want to do this. I said, all right, you two kids, you'll probably make it, but you're not going to. You've spent a month and you haven't rent an offer. You have to take action. you got to get out there and write the offer. You have to show up and learn. And if you learn to be creative enough and you actually are taking action to get what you want to get closer to your goal, then you're going to do it. It's not going to be as fast as you want most of the time. How many people have you heard that were just an overnight success? It only took them five or 10 years to get there. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the I love the the words lucky and overnight success because you know mm -hmm. what the, behind all luck there's a lot of hard work going on behind the scenes and then the same thing with um with overnight success yeah my oh, yeah. overnight success took me twenty years you're just seeing the highlight reel so I have two children that both own multiple pieces of real estate never gave them any money they're both best selling authors. And the one became a millionaire before he could drive. He is currently 16 and just got his driver's license a couple of weeks ago. He has uh, his third book is coming out here in a month or so, and he's already writing his fourth. Wow. And he love his favorite thing is be creative and take action. So he's pushing on that. If he can do this as a minor, anybody can do this. And for anybody listening that has kids, eight to 24 year olds, I'll plug his free group, Millionaires in Training. He does a free mentoring for a couple hours every Monday that him and his brother run. 
And it's all about getting out there, taking action. And there's a lot of underage people that are buying real estate. Uh, and it's taught by people that have already, my kids own 39 and 46 units. Wow. And you're doing all of this right now. There's so much talk about interest rates and economic downturn in the housing market. So can you speak a little bit to that too? Because that doesn't seem to even, you don't, you're not batting an eyelash at the interest rates, but so can you talk a little bit about that as well? Like, Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> Every time that something makes it harder, I'm a survivor. I will come out on top. Sure. It adds a little bit of complication in my life, but it's no big deal. During 2010 was one of my best years ever. Every time I'd faced adversity that year, the next turned out to be the best year that we had had to date. So with all these prices going up, all that means that people that were on the easy train, they're just sitting there and everything always goes up in value and life's great. That's like buying stocks in the 80s. Everybody looked like a genius because they kept going up. Yeah. And I was a kid. I couldn't do that. I had to live with the great stock market crash of 2000, the, you know, the financial reset. And they said there were some problems in seven, eight, nine. Well, by nine and 10, uh, in 2010, I bought my first 50 unit. I think wow. I only owned about 75 units at the time. So I almost doubled in one purchase. Wow. And everything went on sale. I mean, if you want to buy a new dress or pair of shoes, you go to the store, do you look like, no, no, no. I want that one where they say they're going to charge me 200%. Or do you look for the sale rack? Or maybe you find what you want and be like, really? I can get this for 20% off? It's uh, That's where we are today. So it's harder to get a loan. Then don't go to a bank and get a loan. Like I said, I'm teaching people that can't get loans for whatever reason. I couldn't get a loan because I didn't have a W-2 job. I yeah. bet there's a couple of people listening that if they have intermittent income, it's more difficult for them to get a loan from a traditional bank. Yeah. So don't go to a traditional bank. Do a subject to deal where you just take over the mortgage payments of somebody that already qualified and wanted to move. Wow. Now is a phenomenal time to do that or to assume their loan because they probably have a three or four, five, maybe even 6% loan. But with current interest rates today, you're looking at seven and a half percent to have a new loan written. Yeah. So buy something with the existing financing in place, subject to the existing financing. Huh. And that's that you don't need to qualify. You don't need to have a credit score. You don't need to have a down payment. Sometimes they will even pay you to take those properties. And sometimes you have to pay because they have equity. Wow. But that's a great way to do it. So interest rates don't matter. You say this matter of factly, half of my audience is probably like, hold on, what did he say? They're going to be rewinding this part so that they can, hold on, what was that again? No, that's awesome. But I love, the thing is, is that the people that are the most successful in the world, they're not doing the same things that everyone else is doing. If you want to exactly. be in the top 1%, you have to do what the top 1% are doing, not what the bottom 99% are doing. So if you're listening to this, just understand that the re like I love I'm ha I'm I'm learning a lot too. I don't know if you see this. I'm taking notes as we're on this podcast, but I I love learning from people that are doing what I want to do. So let's let's shift gears just for two seconds. So you were talking about your kids who are underage. Who one of them is a millionaire. Okay, most of my audience is well over at the age of eighteen. So can you talk about? Some of the values that you've instilled in your children, because you were telling me before we, when we talked before the podcast about some amazing things that your kids did just to like get their first piece of real estate. Yes, I would say one of the most important things is take responsibility. Everything is your fault. And I have a couple of different women working in one of my real estate offices and they won't take credit for any of the good stuff they do. It is just as important to say, I did that. Whatever happened, I caused it. I talked to this person. I turned them in from a random phone call to a legitimate prospect. They turned in a lease and they moved into one of our apartments. Take credit for that. You are good enough. That is awesome. And on the other side, which is more of the male problem, don't try and blame it on somebody. Okay. Stand up, be a man. It's your fault. 
it's okay. Just don't make the same mistake again, if at all possible. And if you take absolute responsibility for your life, then you have control over your life. But if you try and blame, justify, or complain, you're giving control to everybody else in the world but you. And you'll never be able to change that. You'll never be able to grow. Yeah, I love that so much. And that applies so much to actors and models because sometimes they'll go on an audition and they'll be like, well, they just didn't like me or this or that. Like, you know what the thing is? is There are two things with specifically with actors and models is that either you weren't the right fit for the part or you just didn't do your due diligence and you didn't give the audition the what you needed to do. So it's always so important to, like you said, take just take responsibility. Right. And if they didn't like you, why didn't they like you? If they're looking for a male and you're a female, it's hard to change that. If yeah. you're looking for a blonde and they and you're a redhead, okay, that's an easy fix. Do your due diligence, like you said, yeah. and figure out what they want and be that when you walk in. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so can you just share really quick, like really briefly, the story of your son's getting into real estate? Because that's fascinating to me. <laughs> Devin was the first one. He's 16 now. I went and taught a group. I just had it last night. Every Wednesday, we have a few hour meeting and I do mentoring locally. And he's been drug and a car carrier since he was an infant. By the time he could walk, he's walking out of the meeting to the play area of the restaurant that we're in. And then I noticed when he's three or four, he starts sticking around and he's paying more attention to what's going on. He talks to me in the office, daddy, let's play, daddy, let's play. So in order to spend more time with him, I was like, oh, kid, just sit here. I need more coffee. And he sits down in this very desk and starts reconciling my accounts. I teach him, look, just here's the paper. Take this and match up. If you find it on the screen, put a click beside it. And when uh, the bottom right corner is zero, you win the game. It's like that memory game we play. (laughs) And so that was the first job. And then I had him sign a contract. I started paying him for his reconciliations. Then about five, he walks in and said, dad, it's time for me to start investing on my own. And what should I invest in? Like most of your listeners, tell me what to buy. I just want to get rich quick. (laughs) And I told him when I tell everybody, he's like, dad, what should I invest in? I said, invest in what you know. And he thinks really hard. He says, I don't really know anything but Legos. He's five. I said, good, go find a way to make money in Legos. And I'll be darned if he didn't find a way to make money with Legos in the next two days. Wow. And by the time he, and he messed everything up like you would expect from a five-year-old. And I did not save him or tell him what to do. I let him learn the lessons. I let him fall down. It was a lot better for him to hurt himself with $500 of his money than $50,000 that he borrowed from somebody else. Yeah. And he, when he learned those lessons, by the time he was seven, he found a way to take over payments on a house that was worth $80,000 and he could buy it for 50. So a lender that is not, he has never borrowed money from anybody related to him. Not me, not his grandma, nobody. And he found this private lender that was happy to finance a house that had all this equity. That was his first house. The other one bought a mobile home park or a mobile home for a thousand dollars and intended to rent it out. Ended up one of the girls in the office wanted to buy it. He flipped it to her for two thousand dollars. One of the contractors that works for me wasn't paying his bills, hired the wrong manager, had two units worth of drywall damage and broken water lines. He's not collecting enough money, didn't pay his mortgage for two months and was losing a six unit. And the kid used that $2,000 to bring his payments up to date and take over the first and second mortgage on a six unit building. So at seven years old, he's sitting in a kitchen negotiating with a lady that he had never met before on why she should let him take over payments on a $25,000 loan for the second mortgage. And she's like, I really just want my money, but I'll waive all the late fees and interest and everything. He's like, I'm seven. I don't have that money to pay you. 
He's like, I'm but sorry. I will pay you over. She's like, well, can you pay me over two years? I think it turned out to be five. In fact, he pays it off this year. <laughs> so I guess that's a seven year loan because he's wow. 13. So yeah, he, uh, he negotiated that. And then we went out to the truck and I was like, fantastic kid. But you know, nothing's done until the paperwork's done. And he's like, dad, seriously, I just talked to this lady. I didn't know. Now I got to do paperwork. <laughs> That's awesome. But they're great lessons. I mean, anyone listening here can take from take the lessons from your children and from you. And it's just, it's amazing. So anyone listening, what is one piece of advice you would give them to start acquiring real estate or just to start getting more financial security? I am moderately harsh. And I will tell you, nobody cares what you want. Do not go buy that big, beautiful house that you or your wife or your husband wants, because that's not what your customer wants. Find out what your customer wants. Go buy that, rent it to them at a profit. And understand there are stereotypes because they're generally true. If it's a couple, the woman is more likely to choose where you're going to live so find something that she wants. What are the two rooms? I bet you I can guess what two rooms you care the most about in your house. Is it the kitchen and the bathroom? Yeah, that's what I look at first. And your husband, or if you have a male with you, what's he going to look at? The garage, the man cave, or the yard? Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's the same it's everywhere the in the world. Find something that has what your customer wants, depending on the demographics, depending on the state that you're in, how much money people make. Then you're going to look for bigger or smaller, but figure out a place that you can do that. Your goal needs to be clearly defined. And if you want to own the big house on the hill, then you can own that. And you'll probably go broke. Mm -hmm. If your goal is cash flow, buy what makes cash flow. And if you can't do that in LA, then do it in the Midwest. And all of my property is in the Midwest because the cash flow is so much better. Got it. That's awesome. Well, Eric, this was amazing. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for sharing your, like, these were like, not even, these are like gold bars you shared with us today. So thank you for sharing that. Um, where can people find you if they want to find you on social media or... You can find us on virtually every social media, especially YouTube and Instagram at Real Power Family. You'll at see Real my at Real Power Family. You'll see my wife, both of my teenage sons and me. We make videos every day and at least once a week we put longer ones on. And really the most important thing, if you're interested in this, I am talking about this and describing each one of these things in detail every week in a free newsletter. Sign up at clearskytrainer.com. Again, clearskytrainer.com, free newsletter. There's also a free ebook is the first thing you can download about why you should start investing. And if you're tired of the ups and downs of your income, if you just want something steady, start out slow. You don't need to get rich overnight. Just buy one house and get it rented and then do one more. And next thing you know, you wake up, you've got 20, 30, 50 of them, and you never have to work again. And then you look back, I'm looking, I was like, wow, that was hundreds of properties ago. And you're trying to figure out what you should buy for your next airplane. <laughs> That's the goal. I love that. That's awesome. That's it. That's all you have to do. Be creative and take action. It starts with education. And then you write an offer. And then you hire the right manager and go out and do it again. Awesome. Eric, thank you so much. This has been so insightful. And I know that my audience is going to learn so much from this short time that we had together. So thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Janine. I just love talking to you. And anytime you need anything, give me a call. Same here, Eric. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the VIP Ignite Live podcast. I hope you learned a lot. This is what I want you to do. I want you to hit subscribe to the VIP Ignite Live podcast. Follow us on all forms of social media because we're going to have more tremendous guests like Eric that can add value to you. And you know what I want you to do? Reach out to him and see how you can add value to him as well. Awesome. All right, guys. So hit subscribe and I will see you on the next episode. Thank you.